Stray Demon is the boss you will encounter upon returning to the Undead Asylum. While it looks very similar to the boss you fought the first time around, Asylum Demon, there are some very important differences that make the fight a little more difficult. The first thing is that you will have to drop down into the boss arena. Even if you manage to trigger the ceiling breaking without falling down, which is possible, you can't actually damage the boss until you're down there with him, so it's unavoidable that you have to take this drop. So unless you have fall control, which as a sorcerer you can use to reduce fall damage, you will start the fight at maybe around half HP, which is obviously a bit of a handicap at first. And this means that the first thing you should do upon falling down is getting out of the way and healing up. Depending on where you're dropping down into the boss fight from, make sure to kill the two hollows that are up above, because otherwise they may drop down into the boss room with you and cause some trouble. The boss's attack will damage them, so they don't survive for long, but especially considering you start at lower HP, this might become an issue if they get a few hits off on you. As you're falling, you should try to spam the roll button. Usually, this means that once you hit the ground, you actually roll instead of getting the staggering animation from landing. This means you can get back into the action quicker, and you can find a nice safe place and heal up. If you didn't get this animation, which occasionally happens, then it's usually advisable to roll away from the boss instead, get some distance and heal that way. This is particularly important when he does his forward facing explosion, because when you land and are at half HP, not being able to get out of the way of this explosion can be very dangerous. Once you have healed from the fall damage and are in position, however, the fight is actually very straightforward. It is a lot tougher than Asylum Demon, simply because it has well over 5000 HP, but it's not complicated or particularly challenging. And the reason for this is that it's very easy to avoid taking damage at all. And in order to do this, all you have to do is bury your face between his buttocks and just keep stabbing away at it. This is the safest place to be and a very convenient location to do nice damage to him. So once you have gotten into this position, just do anything you can to maintain it. There are a few things he will do to basically get you out of this, but they're all easily avoided and countered. The first thing you will need to do with is this explosion, which is in an area around him. It also hits slightly behind him, so you can't afford to just stand there and do nothing about it. But you can use the animation to get some swings in, especially on his tail, and then take a few steps backward. It doesn't have much range behind him. Wait for the explosion to go away, and then return to your position and continue stabbing away. Because this attack has quite a lengthy animation, and you can use your attacks during most of it, it's actually quite a welcome sight and probably the easiest thing you can punish. He may also just turn around, and at some point he will use an attack facing forward. But if you continue strafing, then this attack will not hit you. So if he just slowly turns around, strafe around, keep staying behind him, and you will be fine. And finally, just like Asylum Demon before, this boss has a butt slam attack. Again, it has a very slow wind-up because the boss slowly flies up and then sma smashes into the ground. When you see this wind-up, just take a few steps back so it doesn't hit you. The boss will turn and face you, and there's nothing you can do about this really. So after he's landed and is recovering, you can run around and once again get behind him quite easily. Be aware that this attack does have a lingering hitbox, so it's best to make your circle around him slightly wider. There are some other attacks he will use when you're in front of him, but since it is definitely not advisable to be in that position in the first place, these will not be any problem for you if you just follow my strategy. If, for whatever reason, you decide you want to block his attacks, be advised that his explosions deal magic damage. So in order to be able to block them efficiently at all, you want a shield that has good stability and high magic defense. So for example, an upgraded crest shield, and you can get the crest shield from this very same area, might be a good idea. However, I reiterate, you should not be blocking his magic attacks at all. You should be standing behind him and stabbing away at his butt. So, assuming you're following my directions, you are now constantly behind him and constantly stabbing him doing damage. You will notice that he doesn't take a lot of damage. This is a boss that is somewhat considered late game, or at least optional. So, he has high HP and quite good defense, meaning it will just take a while to whittle him down. Very similar to how Gaping Dragon was not a difficult fight, but usually a lengthy one because of your weapon upgrade level at that point. Once again, you can improve your damage by applying weapon buffs. The 
Sorcerer should now have access to the magic weapon buff, which increases your damage by some amount of magic damage. And of course there's still the gold and charcoal pine resins which you can use. Now the effect of those is somewhat underwhelming however, unlike with Gaping Dragon where the lightning buff really made a major difference, you will not see a massive increase in damage here. But if you have the souls to spare for the pine resins, you might as well use them. A far more effective way to increase your damage is to use a bleed weapon. Most bosses can be affected by bleed but have a high resistance. So against enemies like Capra Demon it would take 15 or 20 hits maybe with a bleeding weapon to actually get a bleeding damage to proc. Stray Demon however has a very low resistance to bleeding. This means it takes 3 maybe 4 hits with bleed affecting damage in order to trigger a bleeding proc. And this will deal a significant chunk of damage immediately, because once the bleed meter on the boss is filled up, he will just take a certain percentage of his maximum HP as damage instantly. And this means that even an unupgraded bandit knife, for example, could outdamage your main weapon, depending on how strong that is at this point, simply because the bleeding is a fixed amount of damage, depending only on the boss's HP, and doesn't depend on the upgrade level at all. So if you have access to a bleeding weapon and you're finding your damage a little underwhelming otherwise, that is a good way to improve it. Additionally, as the name sort of implies, this is a demon type enemy, which means that black knight weapons do increase damage to him. So if you've gotten lucky to up to this point and gotten a black knight weapon, especially since there are even more black knights in this area, you could actually have one at this point. These do increase damage to him, and since they're already quite strong weapons from the start, they could also be a good choice if your main weapon doesn't impress you. Once the boss is dead, you will receive 20,000 souls, a homeward bone and a humanity. These will, as always, be added straight to your inventory. The boss, however, is also guaranteed to drop a titanite slab, which is the highest tier of upgrade material for standard upgrades. But this will not be added to your inventory. This is a standard drop that he just leaves wherever you killed him. Make sure to pick this up. Slabs are difficult to farm and quite rare and valuable, so don't miss this since it's one of the few guaranteed slabs you can get in the game. And then a final note, leaving the boss fight is done by this ladder. If you have trouble finding it, it's marked with torches. Okay, if you follow all this advice, you should have quite an easy time beating the boss. I hope you found this helpful and insightful. As always, I would highly appreciate any feedback you have. And have a good day. Bye bye.